Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. How is the start of your day? Let me know in the comments. I was just taking a little bit of snooze here in my iguana cage. I tell you, that is, uh, I, it's better than most apartments that I've stayed in, that's for darn sure. The truth is, is that today we've got a lot of work to do, but it's a lot of kind of buttoning up loose ends. Gonna try to work on the alligator tank a little bit again. Gonna try to start the turtle enclosure, but a lot of things are gonna be done over the next few days. And we have a lot of, again, just a little buttoning up to do. Uh, also gonna send you back over to Lori and Noah because they've got some stuff going on, including painting and stuff like that. Regardless, uh, two more days before we head back home and hopefully everything is gonna be done. And tomorrow is the big day, the Anaconda Cage. So let's just jump in because we have a lot to do. Stuart asked me to actually grab this filter for him so that we can start building the turtle pond. Now these are actually Aquascape Biofalls. So it's basically a filtration, but also a waterfall. And uh, basically it goes together to where the pond is gonna be here. And then this clips on the liner part here. Stuart will build a kind of rock type of situation and rock this whole thing so you don't really even see the filter, but then all the bio filter and stuff like that goes here. Uh, should be good, so I have to just take this over to him and hopefully uh, this will be the start of uh, the turtle pond. Should be pretty awesome. So this is a simulation of the wall that divides the old reptarium from the new reptarium because there's gonna be cages over here, cages over here, and we want the turtle pond to wrap around this. So this is basically just simulating so we can build the pond right around this. We have the kind of outlay here on the floor. What we're gonna do is use this board to actually just bend to the shape. Then Stuart's gonna actually shoot his stuff to actually make the form and start to build the kind of shape of the pond and then build out the rock work and all that type of stuff. So uh, that's a pretty simple way to build this pond. That way it won't be super heavy because there's not gonna be a real like iron or glass structure. It's just gonna be actually the polyurea and foam. So uh, we'll go ahead and cut these up and get this formed out and start blowing it. I know it seems crazy to be building uh, an entire pond out of basically plywood or little, not even like little tiny plywood, but the fact is that this is going to be all foamed up, it's going to be polyurethane, and it's going to be as uh, solid as it should be. I know it seems crazy, but this is how we're doing it. I mean, this stuff is like rock right here, so it's, uh, you almost can think like pool liner, right? Where this is completely sealed right here, and then we'll actually foam, we'll put liner over it, we'll start to build it out, but this is the start of the turtle pond, and again, this is going to be the dividing line that separates the old Reptarium from the new Reptarium. This is the wall, cages on this side, cages on that side. So this is gonna be a really cool feature. And again, it's gonna be awesome because there'll be turtles, there'll be a waterfall right here. Uh, it's gonna be really cool. I can't wait to have this in. It's gonna really connect the two buildings together, but I know it seems crazy that you can do this, but trust me, it's gonna work. So I started my day painting the heat vents that are gonna go in the ceiling. So the ceiling's gonna be black, but then when we ordered them, for some reason, we got white instead of black. And I didn't think that was gonna look very good. So the way to fix that is to paint them. So I did that this morning. I'm actually really happy the way it turned out. And um, I'm also happy because I've never done spray paint before. So after doing this, I feel like I have potential to be a graffiti artist. Falls here in the turtle pond, big plastic box. We've got to make that look like rock and we've got to be able to get to it. We've got some plumbing there. We only need one line. So we've got some plumbing. The, the, the pipe's going to run all the way around over here to the other side. The pump will sit in down here. So that'll be sucking water from here and putting it back over there and overflowing. So that'll cycle the turtle pond. Turtles are pretty messy. They, get, they eat a lot, they waste a lot. So there's a bit of mess. So this will help keep this recycled. We cover this with rock, and then this is what goes over in between the old um, part of the zoo to the new part of the zoo. So we're gonna create another little outlet here. So we'll have another waterfall coming off here where the turtles will be able to bask as well. So still a bit more work to do, but the plumbing most important. 
and then we can cover most of that. After I don't even know how many hours, I got all of the primer done for the Reptarium. All the walls here, all the way down there. <sighs> There's a lot. And the party room, all of this is all primed. So now I can go ahead and get the colored paint and go ahead and paint all the walls that need to be painted and we'll be ready for the following day the ceiling to be installed. All right so you can see kind of the idea again this is going to be the wall here uh, it's kind of all rocked out obviously got to do a lot of fixturing up with this the next thing to do is to put the waterfall in right here which is actually the bio filter and the waterfall and then of course some ledges for the turtles and stuff like that it's pretty quickly turned into something that's pretty awesome. really sort of thank you in some ways because of your zoo you've sort of pushed me to make these a little bit more portable yeah we could have built all this on site right. okay um, it's great that you didn't you came down you helped build the cages and what we've done really as you said the other day we went from a you know the, the happy homeowner size cage to a cage on steroids yes you know these panels because we have the equipment in here, we've, we've secured them, but all that can be done on site with a lot less big, heavy equipment than we've done. My equipment just makes it quicker. Yes. Okay, but on site, you can do that anyway. Yeah, we've done some of that at the Reptarium. You, you come up, you do a lot of that on site. Yep, right? yep, and then you took over. The, all the seaming you guys did anyway. The learning curve is super quick. Yeah, right, it really right, is. Right. And it's amazing. It's just a little bit of artistic, but it's uh, the seams just disappear. When I grab the foam gun and I'm working on this, I've got to make sure that I get this level, so we'll do that. Also, we can't have any water running over the side, so this is going to have a lot more decorations a cover, some more rocks covering around this, the waterfall, and then later on we're gonna to have to make this wall in the actual zoo look good too, but we'll do that on site. the ability to use plants now you have the ability to use moss that we're, we're promoting you have vines yep. you have um, different rocks that you can actually just attach to, yep. to cover your seams yep. but also you can just do the seaming with the same rock dust that we use to make yep. it to cover it anyway so it's it got easier we've yep. since since that I've been doing this 22 years I've been making habitats for that but I hadn't made them portable of this size yeah now this the fact that we've got you know this one over here it's, it's ten and a half feet long eight foot tall the average one we've got here is six That's by six, six, six by six. five or yep. four and um the fact is they most of them probably weigh three to five hundred pounds yep. a pallet jack a couple yep. of guys um can push it through and put it into place all this has to be seamed on site with whatever we've got lots of decorations yep. to do that so that's what we'll do. We'll place all this again yep. like we did last time. We're going to uh, raise these off the ground a little bit, seam all of that, and then while that's up to you to put your bedding in there, yep. your, your water bowls or feed bowls or what, ha what have you. In some of the cases like this one up here, um, I think it would be great if you, if you made one or two of these with live plants. Oh, absolutely. And, the, and yep. then, you know, cut the holes. Like, this is new to me. I don't know why it's taken me 20 years to think about this, yep. but this is all secured all the way around. So you just come in and cut your holes in here and there, wherever you want. Yeah, put your dirt. Fill it with soil. Yeah, yeah. Put a few little wheat holes in the bottom. Yeah. And um, and then this is just, you know, the humidity that you're gonna get created in here, this will become a rainforest and yeah. uh, the moss will grow itself in here. You can certainly see that the pond is definitely coming together. We got some ridges over here. Of course, we'll have some ledges for the turtles to actually get up on, but uh, they're just kind of skinning out the rest of it with rock so that it looks uniform all over. Absolutely gonna look amazing when it's done. Uh, I, I love it. I love the way it's turning out. And again, with some of these ledges for the turtles, I can just kind of envision the waterfall going. You got turtles that are up on the top right there. I mean, this is gonna be really cool transition from the old Reptarium to the new Reptarium. Almost done. I got this big wall done. I got the other side wall. Uh, I've got one more room, the massage room, that has to get painted. And then after that, 
Uh, I think I can be done for the day. This wall here, you might wonder why only the top part is painted, because this wall is gonna have the rock on it. So I just needed the top covered, so whatever little bit might peek out above the rock will not be white, but the rest of that that you see is gonna be covered with rock. So yeah, I'm just gonna try to... So I'm going to knock out this massage room and then I'll catch up with you when I'm done. to be painted is painted. Next step, ceiling installation. I don't understand how anyone would want to do it the old school way of like cement and, and all that arduous work, plus the permanent. Like you said, you've got to think, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a few hundred pounds, but let's say I wanted to redo a wall. Right. I could just take this out, right. move it around, yep. redo anything I want to do. I mean, it's silly that not, you know, and it's not just, I mean, certainly zoos, but even like advanced collectors. I mean, someone that wants just a badass, you know, reptile room that's all natural rock, you could do this. Yep. And, yep. and whether you do it here and ship it or they ship you the panels and them do it, you know, it, it's not that hard. The learning curve is pretty good. You need a little bit of art. Obviously, you're better than anyone else, but at the same time, anyone with just a little skill can make a really incredible enclosure with yours. We, we've had guys that turn their bedroom into, into caves and, yeah. and then they have a section in that they create in their bedroom where it becomes a... I mean, I kid you not, a guy with an alligator in his room and whatnot. Oh but it is just carrying our big panels in. Yep. You screw it onto the wall. You build yourself a pond, obviously, and you and you decorate all around that, and yep. you build your build your proper environment so they yep. can't get out. But it, the the point is, it's really versatile. It's really fun and easy to work with. There's hundreds and hundreds of different models. I, I basically make stuff when I'm happy, and I make stuff when I'm sad. So <laughs> I just keep making stuff all the time. Yes. Um, and and listen, you know, I'm telling you what, guys, dead serious. The Reptarium wouldn't have happened, and this expansion wouldn't even be thought of if it wasn't for the fact that I met right, you. Right. Because I had this idea of cutting foam and doing. It would have never happened. You yeah. know, what I mean, so so you facilitated this, and, and really anyone that just wants a really incredible enclosure, small, large, whatever the case is, it's 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 a no-brainer. You got to you got to go to Universal. Rock. So, so the foam, I mean, if I showed you guys the first stuff I did, it's not that creative, it's not that good. So as you get better and better, mm -hmm. so if you were, if you had tackled the habitats with your foam and carving it probably be what you would have found is the first one was atrocious yeah the last one was okay yeah but still not great yeah um, the advantage of what we're doing is we go and take molds from trees yeah. rolls rocks. from rocks yep. and it, it, and then you just turn that and bend that and turn, turn that into something if, if you need it to be different yeah. than just what you molded so right. that is really hard I learned how to make cement rocks I paid a guy to teach me many years ago and it's really difficult yep. to do a high level cement rock, artificial rock. And um, this way you get the high level and the yep. ease of all the, the durability and the lightweight and all the rest. So. And your 30 years of experience doing right. it. Right, right, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it yeah. Helps. The turtle pond is pretty much done. Just some more fixturing, a few more ledges and stuff like that for the turtles to actually be able to come out. This is obviously the main biofall waterfall here. Gonna be another waterfall here, all these here, so the kids could come and not only see them, but they could feed them and stuff like that. Gonna be absolutely incredible. I couldn't be more happy with the way this one turned out for sure. Wow, when it's all fixed, out and you got to remember there's going to be a big timber here where the actual opening is for the next trip here and oh my god this is awesome guys so i couldn't be more happy with this one if you enjoyed this video can you do me a favor can you subscribe to my new podcast channel because i think you guys will enjoy it over here you can run through an entire playlist of us building the first rep tarim. over here you can certainly subscribe to this channel and turn the post notification on if you don't mind have a wonderful day remember you better be kind to someone i promise i'll see you guys tomorrow